<laughs> so funny. Dude, I almost had you. You almost had me? Yeah. You never had a chance. I can challenge. This guy. Here we are. This is the GTX 970 from Gigabyte, the Wind Force. I've been looking for a GTX 1060 for a build, but I haven't seen any available. And I've had a 970 before, but I've never actually tried one. So, can the GTX 970 compete with the 1060 in 2024? Well, let's check it out. So here it is in my test system and it's not working. Kind of was flashing a little bit, but it just came on. I don't know what that was all about. So let's see if it works. Wind force. So that was a bit of a scare. The card didn't post video at all. And then I tried it, I reseated it, I tried it again, didn't work, and I just gave up. I came back the next day, which is in the part you saw. It turned green for some reason for like three times, and now it works, so I guess we're okay. I assume maybe the card hadn't been used for so long that maybe there's some sort of situation there, but what I want to do is uh, we're gonna make this a two-part video because people always tell me that my videos are too long. So we're just gonna talk about the 970 first and then the second video will have the actual benchmarks. So how this came about, I was looking for a budget GPU for $50. And if you see my old videos, I'm like 100% into the 1060. That the 1060 was my first GPU a few months ago, and I kind of don't know it comes before the 1060. So I don't have education on, you know, like 700 series and 900 series and stuff like that. So in one of the videos, I actually bought a 970 for $40 a few months ago, only to take the heatsink from it to put on my 1060. And I, I did plug it in, I'm pretty sure, and I did turn it on. I probably did a fur mark or something. But in that time frame, I didn't know what the differences were. I just assumed that 900 was less than 1,000. 1060 would be better than a 970. I did not know that the 60, 70, and 80 had a, had a sort of a, um, I don't know what you want to call it, like a, an upscale. And it wasn't until I actually ended up getting a 980 Ti and then I kind of backwards researched what the differences were. So I didn't know that 50 was not as good as the 60, is not as good as the 70, not as good as the 80, and then the Ti from there. So I never really got a chance to try the 970. So fast forward to today, sorry for that little history part, but I, I've been looking for a 1060 and or something for this a budget build that I'm doing and my budget for the GPU was just $50. And that's the most I could spend. I wanted a 1060. I can't find them anymore for some reason. And then I was thinking, well, I'll, I'll get a 1063 gigabyte because I've never tried one of those. None of those available, maybe an RX 470 or something like that. There's just... For some reason in in my area the used market has kind of dried up and it's something that i want to pick up in person i don't want to buy it online and so i found a few candidates and then i found this gtx 970 for 50 dollars and i kind of did like a slow play off i said i was interested and then it took a couple days and then he said are you still interested and i said maybe and then I said, you know, can you do any better? And then he said, if you pick it up right now, I'll take 40 bucks. 
So, 40 bucks. But this is not a normal 970. This is after I kind of looked at the pictures more and I and I really hadn't researched the 970. But this is like a better version of the 970. The Windforce G1 Gaming. And there is apparently a regular Windforce 970 that does not have a backplate that I saw in some of the videos. And the G1 Gaming has this long backplate and this big thing. In fact, it was so big that it wouldn't even fit in my case that I'm trying to do this build on. So then uh, in before I was going to pick it up, I just went ahead and put in GTX 970 versus 1060. And it turns out, to my surprise, that the 970 actually approaches the 1060 performance level and the 1650 regular. And so I thought, well, you know, I've overclocked the 1060 to basically its maximum. I've overclocked so many 1060s compared to most people. I mean, I've, I've done a lot and I've, I mean, I've gone for like just even a couple, 10 more points of benchmarks on the 1060s. I've probably done it too much. So I was thinking, well, I mean, this 10, this 970 is a better version of the 970. It's not a reference. It's not the basic one. This might be one of the best 970s available. So can I overclock the 970 enough to beat the base model 1060? And then if it does beat the base model 1060, how close can I get it to my overclock 1060? I doubt it's going to win. It is a four gigabyte model, which is, you know, people call it the 3.5 or whatever. I, I really don't think it's going to beat my 1060 record, but I, I think I can definitely get it to beat the base model 1060. And so anyway, if you're into the 970 and the 1060, I would suggest you watch part two. We're going to do actual numbers. We're going to do the whole spreadsheet thing with the comparisons. And if you have a 970 or if you have a 1060 and you want to compare my numbers to yours, feel free to comment and we can talk offline because I think that I have, for the most part on the 1060 side, I think I've pretty much maxed out what's possible, maybe by a few points. I'm sure somebody helped, you know, somebody's done it. I haven't done the shot mod yet, but if you have it, it seems like a lot of people have 970s and that's what I'm seeing now when I Google or YouTube the uh, 970, there's been a ton of posts of 970s just in the last 30 days. So it seems like people are coming out of the woodwork, but I'd be interested to know if anybody else has a 970 or a 1060 or something similar and they've extreme overlocked like I'm trying to do. And then let us, you know, compare notes or kind of have like a little competition to see if you can get the best numbers. Not in games, but like just benchmarks, because that's always fun. So stay tuned and we'll see what this $40 gigantic 70 can do. And we'll see you next time.